Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Join me in faith right now because a miracle is going to happen today. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. Everything I need to make today good for me. I receive it in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, expect a miracle today, even as the Lord opens the heavens and pour you out great ideas and blessings in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now we we were looking at uh, we're still talking about the wisdom of God's word and I was explaining something to you yesterday about the uh, we read, read from Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse let me just go verse, straight to verse 24 it says let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth so I was talking yesterday about exercising loving kindness now you can't stop god from loving because god is love so you can't stop god from exercising kindness in love because see when you when you walk in love you will show kindness it it follows anyone who walks in love will show kindness now kindness remember peter says remove certain things from your heart why so that when you receive the word of god it will now impute the character of God inside of you. And that's how it works. If you don't take out the things, malice, envy, um, uh, bitterness, all those things Peter spoke about, if you don't take them out of your heart, then the character of God will not be formed in you. Why is this saying that receive the pure word of the Lord so that you will grow with it. What does it mean you will grow with it? You will grow in this pure word. You will grow in this character of God. I'll tell you something. Every time you open yourself to God's word, you are becoming what God, God's word says you are. Or whatever he's teaching you, you will become that thing. The purpose of God teaching you his word is so that you will become it, not just to hear and increase in knowledge. No. We don't increase in knowledge just for knowledge's sake. We increase in character by the knowledge we get. See? So if the knowledge is pure and it, it, it speaks of the character of God, now that's why the teaching of God's word is very, very important. Because what does the teaching of God's word do to you? Remember I told you there's very between the teaching of God's word and the teaching of the Bible. See, the teaching of God's word will imbibe in you the character of God. The teaching of the Bible is just an exercise that increases your knowledge. Anytime you teach Bible, you begin to compare this with this. But anytime you teach the, the word of God, you delve into the personality of God. And the more people see God, the more they become Him. Um, first, second Corinth, uh, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, We all with unveiled face, beholding like in a glass the glory of God, are being changed into the same image from glory to glory. First, he said, with unveiled face. See, that's what the, the job of a teacher is. He takes away the veil and you begin to see God. And the moment you begin to see him, you are being transformed into the same image that you see. So when the teacher is not giving you an accurate image of who God is, now you want to wonder what you're being changed into, you see. So the job a teacher of God's word have is to settle in the character, settle in the personality of God and bring it forth for what it is. So just like I was telling you yesterday, sometimes this thing can be difficult, not because it's difficult on God's side, but because of our knowledge of human nature, because of our knowledge of human beings. You just feel, if people know this truth, they will just start taking advantage of God. Hey, who told you anyone can take advantage of God? God will not do anything that is not of himself. Now, you are the one who thinks God bends to do things for people. No, he's just exercising himself. 
because that's who he is. So a new situation makes him exercise to see how far he can go in showing love and kindness to this fellow. And God loves it when, when we ourselves understand him like this. And then we too begin to exercise loving kindness. You remember David. I know I was sharing some, a story with you yesterday about the, the divorced person who's expecting. But then please understand this one I'm going to share with you now. You remember David after he became king. So David asked one day he says hey is there anyone left of the house of Saul so that I will show him kindness loving kindness for Jonathan's sake so David had loved Jonathan as his own soul see now Jonathan's father was out to eliminate David but David loved Jonathan as his own soul. So he made a covenant with Jonathan because of that love. He was not coerced into making that covenant. As long as I live, I'll protect you and all that you've got. So David became king. And one day he just remembered his covenant. And so he said, is there any left of the house of Saul? So that I will show him this loving kindness for Jonathan's sake. And guess what they said? They said, yes, there is one, but he's lame at his feet. Now, why did they introduce someone like that? Say, there is one, but hey, he's lame at his feet. Because the person who's answering David knew that David had a problem with lame and blind people. He did. The Bible shows us that he did. For whatever reason, I don't know why he, he just didn't like them. I don't know why. So now he's asking a question. He says, is there anyone in the house of um, Saul so that I will show him kindness because of Jonathan? And he said, there is one who but it's just that he is lame at his feet. Oh, what's his name? Mephibosheth. Where is he? He's in Lodiba. David says, go get him. And so they went and fetched him. And David saw him. Despite the fact that he was lame and David didn't like lame people. Guess what David said? David said, look, Everything that belongs to your father, your grandfather, I'm going to restore it to you. Number two, you are going to sit on my table anytime I eat. So you will eat with me on my table. Guess what David was doing? He was exercising loving kindness. How far can I go to show love? And God, no wonder God looked at David and said, this is a man after my heart. Now, a man after my heart simply means a man who would just behave like me. <laughs> you understand that? A man who would just behave like me. God loved David so much, not because of the actions or, or the mighty things David did, but because of the way David was able to, uh, to because he understood God. And he, he just wanted to be like God. Every action of David, he just wanted to act the same way God will act. God said, this guy just follows me. He, he just, he just would, would show. Now, why is God excited about those things? The same way he gets excited about you when you do it. Why? Because you are making him see that, please understand me when I say this. You are making God feel or see that he's not crazy after all. <laughs> you understand what I mean by that? He does certain things and you know how even, even you sometimes you begin to wonder, am I okay? God goes through those moments too. He, he loves and he's wondering, is this, is this okay? Am I, am I good? Am I okay? 
And he sees us do the same thing and goes, ah, you see, that's my man. <laughs> He's God. Yes, God does that. That's why God loved David so much. He loved David so much. Now that's exercising loving kindness. So, so I was talking about someone who has hurt you. I was talking about that yesterday. Someone who has hurt you so bad. Someone who has mistreated. Someone who has stolen from you. Okay. Now here you are. You're, you're, you're looking at that person. And you are expecting a bad news to come from that. You were you expecting to hear that he was involved in an accident. Two of his legs were cut. And he was like, hey, yeah, but that, deep down in your heart, I'm like, it serves him right. Hey, if he had done well, he wouldn't have been suffering this thing. If, if he had not cheated me, but maybe this is how God is paying him back for what he did to me. No, that's not God paying him back for what he did to you. God does not pay the enemy for what they do to you. God pays you for what the enemy does to you. Because the seeing, and, and this is where we, we get it wrong, and then we, we, we actually cheat ourselves. I'm still on loving kindness. Now, God exercising loving kindness. This is where we cheat ourselves. We want God to carry out evil towards that person. Or he should act evil towards that person. Right? And what you don't know is this. That God in his nature, which is love. So he, he loves to exercise loving kindness. The same way he wants to exercise loving kindness towards that person is the same way he wants to exercise loving kindness towards you that have been hurt by that person. So while God is exercising love towards that person, he is also exercising love towards you. But well, here is the problem. The person may receive that love from God and you, because your heart is so full of evil thoughts concerning that person, may miss receiving the love that God is exercising towards you. You see how bad it is now. So someone has cheated you. Someone stole some money from you. Now you are waiting for that person because now you, you, you want to do something to get your money back. Then you realize that it's gone. Your money is gone. You can't get it back. So you feel so hurt. You feel so angry at what you have lost. But you see that feeling of hurt and anger. Anytime you see the person, you just wish the police would just arrest the person. You just wish someone, maybe you could even report the person to the police. You understand? But then you just wish the person would fall into one trap that the police would just get him locked up for life, get him to face firing squad. And then you now, instead, you now hear that the person has gotten a job or he's gotten a good job. And you're like, Yo, why should you be the one grinding your teeth? Have you thought about that? Now, God is exercising loving kindness towards that person. But then you find yourself in a place where you have envy and, and, and malice and all these evil things in your heart. Meanwhile, God can actually lift you to a, to a position where that thing becomes irrelevant to you. In fact, if the person comes back and say, I'm sorry, you, that money I stole from you, I, I want to return it back. You, you look at the person and say, what money? Because it has become so insignificant to you. Ah, no, Pastor Tua, you don't understand. If, if I tell you how much is involved, it doesn't matter how much is involved. The truth is you've been able to let go of it. You've been able to lose that money and you're still alive. What does that tell you? Your life is deeper or greater. What does that also tell you? You are bigger than that money. You've just not realized it yet. Oh, I'm still struggling with the loss. Quit struggling with the loss. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, I'm still struggling with the hurt. Every time I see that, I think of what this person did. I say, I, it just gets me so angry. How could I have been a fool to marry this person? How could I have done? How could I have allowed that person into my business? How could I have? How, hey! Something is wrong with you. You've allowed everything Peter said you should let go. You've allowed this stay in your heart. 
and it's becoming a problem to you. Guess your problem now. You are finding it difficult as I'm speaking now. You may be listening to me and say, hey, this pastor does not know. <laughs> ah, he does not know what I have lost. He does not know me. Forgive this guy. Oh, forgive this woman. Ah, 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 ah. See, even as pastors, we find ourselves in situations like that. As a pastor, it, it, sometimes it looks like because you're a pastor, people just have obtained the right to, to be wicked towards you. In different ways, there are people you give counsel to. Now you are convinced of the Lord that this counsel... Have you ever, have you ever uh, dealt with people who think they're in love before as a pastor? But then you can see clearly that these people are headed for hell. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? This union is, going, is heading for hell. You can see it clearly. And you are trying to tell these people, look, this thing is not going to work. And then they are, they are busy convincing themselves that you are wrong. As a pastor, things like that can break your heart. You know why it will break your heart? Now, you, you, you just wish these people can go suffer their pain alone and you will not be involved. But then you think of the future and you know that this matter is going to end up with you again when it's terrible and bad. So you just, you just, you, you're just feeling the heartbreak already. There are many times as pastors, you, you, you are, you see people heading for the wrong direction. You shout, you correct, but they wouldn't hear you. And yet, when they get into that difficult situation, they still run back to you and say, please pray for me. Pray for you? And, and you just feel you should say to them, serves you right. Pray for you what? You better go deliver yourself. I, my hand is not involved. But you see, why are you saying that? The problem is you've allowed envy and strife and malice and all those things into your heart. Can you get those things clear so that God can speak his pure word to you? Now, when Peter says receive the pure word, he's not saying read the Bible so that you understand it with pureness. Someone said, you know, he says receive the, the pure word of the Lord. People are thinking, oh, he's talking about the Bible. No, he's saying when God begins to speak to you, his word will come pure as though no one has hurt anybody. His word will come the same way it was in the beginning before anything was created, before anybody sinned. Now that's how he wants you to receive the word of the Lord. The moment you begin to receive the word of the Lord with filters of malice and all these things, now it's no more pure. And because it's no more pure, it's not going to produce the kind of result God intended it to produce in you. Are you understanding what I'm sharing with you? Yet, those people you are angry about, God himself is looking out for how to exercise loving kindness towards them. The mysteries of God. Wow. <laughs> you see... God wants you to grow in Him. But what's going on is we've allowed so much, so much, so much wrong in our hearts. Can you free yourself? Whether you're a pastor, you're a spouse, you're a business, whatever anyone has done to you, can you today Make up your mind. Say, look, you know what? I've struggled with this thing, you know. I'm getting myself free from it. You know what? I, I consider this hurt as okay. It's fine. God wanted to test to see what I can take. I've taken it. Yes, I've taken it. Now it's time to get out of it. Yes, it's time to get out of it. I've suffered this hurt for too long. I've stayed in this darkness for too long. Hey, it's time to get out of this situation. I free myself from every entanglement and evil. I walk free from this situation. Some of you ladies, it's difficult for you to accept that someone can love you because of the way people have treated you in the past. 
You've been in bad and terrible relationships. And here you are right now. You find it difficult for anybody to love you. So any man who walks into your life, it is as though you are taking it out on them. You, you, you punish them. You actually punish them in your heart. How would God speak clearly to you concerning your future and destiny where marriage is concerned? It's going to be difficult. Not because God cannot do it, but in all ways he tries to exercise himself, you will be rejecting him. That's where the problem is. Look at that 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 again. And look at each one of those things and get rid of them in your heart. Get rid of them until you are completely free from them. If you need to take it fast, take it fast. I love you so much. That's why I'm sharing these things with you. <laughs> God. And God loves you. He wants the best for you. And my time is up. Praise God. That's a blessing for you. And may you see the blessing of the Lord in your life today. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.